Good morning, everyone. This is Jennifer Lasanti, the Director of Sales at Beer and Purvis. Thank you very much for participating in today's webinar. This is our annual medical portfolio refresh webinar that we do every year. So we'll be talking about 2018 content for medical only. And a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. We will be sending a copy of this presentation to all the attendees today. And if you have any questions along the way, please type them in. Everyone's on mute. And there's a lot of content in this webinar. I'm not sure if we'll get to um, all the questions during the presentation, but we'll cer certainly circle back to you to address any questions we didn't get to if it comes to that. So having started, said that, let's go ahead and get started today. So here's the agenda. You'll see we'll be uh, quickly covering a little bit of the legislation and regulation updates, portfolio and plan benefits, pharmacy information, networks, canopy health if you're in Northern California, underwriting rates and commissions. So starting with legislation, there were five executive orders that President Trump recently uh, enacted. Two, which are, which are on the screen right now, are effective immediately. The first one is the one that uh, gathered all the attention, and that was the end of the cost sharing reduction subsidies. Now, just a quick reminder that there are two subsidies that are in effect per ACA for people that qualify. The first one helps people pay for the premium to actually have the insurance on a monthly basis. That's not what we're talking about. That is actually in effect by law and cannot be taken away right now. So we're talking about the cost sharing reduction subsidies, which actually help the members when they actually have a you know, service completed with the cost of that service. That too can't be taken away from the actual member receiving the cost sharing subsidy. What happened is President Trump has taken away the reimbursement to the insurance company for subsidizing that cost of care when the actual member uses it. So that is in play now. It's going to affect the cost of silver plans because as a reminder per ACA, if you qualify, the silver plan is the plan that you actually get the subsidies for. And so you can see in the second bullet point that in the state of California, that the insurance companies filed their 2018 covered California exchange rates. And then the state said, we'll file with or without assuming you get these subsidies. Without getting the subsidies, which is what turned out to be, the insurance companies increase their rates 12 and percent on top of the rates that they had already filed. So essentially the silver plans and cover California on the individual exchange are going up 25 percent. Half of that is from not getting these cost sharing reduction subsidies back from the federal government to the insurance companies. Thus, so the irony is that you have to increase the premiums um, to compensate for the loss of money and that therefore they're going to have to increase the premiums so the federal government will actually end up paying more um, as a result of getting rid of these subsidies for the insurance companies because they have to pay the premium subsidies and the cost that they're now paying in 2018 going forward will be higher than it would have been if they kept the subsidies in place so hopefully that uh, makes sense um, but that's kind of where where it is right now the second item of the executive order that is in effect immediately is a prescription contraception. Now, depends on what type of business that you focus on. For us at Beer and Purpose, we sell 1 to 100 small group fully insured benefits. And as a result, this executive order that is in play actually won't affect us. What I mean by that is the the executive order basically expanded the number of employers that could say they have a moral um, objection to providing prescription contraception to their employees. Um, there was laws, we all probably remember, some cases where some employers could do that, they had to file with HHS, et cetera, but it's a pretty narrow who could and who couldn't do that. It's just expanded to, to more employers could say they've got a moral or religious ob objection to providing the contraception so they, they don't have to anymore. However, for those of you that focus in the state of California, fully insured plans like Beer and Purvis, the state of California has a law in effect that says, no, you must cover prescription contraception at 100% for the plans mandated by the state of California, which is our world. So this executive order really won't affect us here at Beer and Purvis and probably most of you today. However, if you do sell self-insured plans or a large group, et cetera, it may. All right, there are three more executive orders that are pending. So um, they were stated, but basically President Trump said, 
to the regulators, go look at this and come back to me and give me guidance on what you think. So the first one you see here is it's going to allow small groups and individuals actually to buy association plans. Now back in the day we've had association plans. Yes, some groups went there. Um, you know, it certainly didn't kill the small group market, but it could take some business away from the small groups. It allows groups and individuals that are in the same line of business to buy essentially large group plans. As a result, the premiums could be lower because they don't have to provide the small group ACA mandated benefits and they're not bound by community rating, they'd have composite rates, etc. So it could be attractive to some small groups that choose to go that route. But we're in limbo right now because the Department of Labor is going to be providing some guidance back to the, uh, the president within 60 days, which would be around December 11th from that executive order. This middle item here you see is at the end of President Obama's presidency, he restricted short-term policies from being a year to only being able to last 90 days, and then you had to get on the exchange or find coverage elsewhere. So now this executive order by President Trump would take that 90 days, extend it out to you could keep those policies for a year and they could be renewable. So what that means is so that stereotypical younger person that thinks nothing's ever gonna happen to them, they don't really care about having rich benefits. They could buy a short-term policy, lower in benefits, not the ACA mandated richer benefits for lower premiums and keep on that policy versus getting on an ACA mandated uh, exchange policy. And the last item here is health reimbursement accounts. This would make HRAs more attractive and you could see the items that it would do there, make contributions tax deductibles, allow the funds to be used for premiums in addition for when you actually use the care and that allows the HRAs to be used with individual plans, not just group plans. There are three secretaries that have to get in, uh, look into this within 120 days and get back to President Trump, and that's the secretaries of HHS, Treasury, and Labor. And those three secretaries are also gonna be providing guidance on the short-term changes well above. All right, so you've probably heard, you know, every day is a little different day in our world nowadays, but there is a bipartisan proposal uh, because the Republican only um, tries didn't happen. So then there has been a bipartisan proposal um, floated and it's, you know, as of today, I just read that it's, you know, not getting attraction. It might not be brought to a vote. But the irony of this one is that the number one thing it would do is it would bring back those subsidies for those insurance carriers for two years for the cost sharing that the executive order just took away. And you can see there's a couple of other items there. I'm not gonna spend so much time on it right now today because it looks like this might not end up happening. If it does, b and will certainly keep you um, notified of all of the detailed information and what you need to know. All right. Now we're switching from federal to California. So there has been some new California laws passed recently that um, the thought process is to try to bring those pharmaceutical costs back in since they've really skyrocketed over the past couple of years. You've all seen it in the media, the cost of the EpiPen increasing, that hep C drug that's so expensive. So um, you know, what can we do to have that balance of encouraging pharmaceutical companies to invest in research and buy and discover these better drugs that help all of us, but do it within a more cost-effective, reasonable price point. So the first thing that happened in California is SB 17. It goes into effect in January 2019. And what it says is it says to the pharmaceutical company, if you're going to raise the cost of your drug more than 16% over a two-year time period, then you have to tell us ahead of time. So you have to give us 60 days advance warning, tell us that the, you're having to increase this and really explain it. Why are you having, you know, did uh, the price of some filler in the prescription increase? Did um, some manufacturing costs increase, et cetera? So this is to try to at least know ahead of time and have them justify the cost increase um, more so than they have to right now. And as part of this, you will see that the carriers actually now have to give the state of California information on what the carriers are currently having to pay on prescription costs. Um, and so it gives the state some kind of some data to use to know what pricing is realistic, what's going to have the effect, etc. The second item here, again, California legislation, and this is about um, pharmaceutical companies 
once a generic drug for their drug gets released, they start giving coupons or to the person actually that's been using the prescription drug. Therefore, it encouraged that member to stay on the brand drug and not try the cheaper generic. So this law is stating, hey, unless there's a situation where step therapy doesn't work or you know, prior authorization was obtained, if a generic becomes available for your drug, you can't start giving that member a copay or coupon to actually um, save money when they stay on your drug keeping the insurance company still paying the higher cost over the generic. So what this is stating is if you're going to give the coupon, that's fine, but you have to give it to both the consumer and the insurance company, not just the consumer, and making the insurance carrier, you know, tote the bill. All right, so now we're moving off legislation and going into some rate regulations, and I think most people have heard this by now, but there's one piece of the uh, adjustment to community rates I don't think that everyone's been speaking um, a lot about and I think it's very important to understand. So first of all in 2018, so starting in January, there's going to be some changes to how the 1 to 100 community rates are rated. So the thought process was to better reflect the cost of children's health care. Um, if, you know, if you've ever had a kid, you're always probably taking that newborn, that toddler to the pediatrician uh, quite a bit You know, when they get sick, but as the kid gets older, probably you don't take them there as much. However, when your teenager has um, you know, a sports injury or something, it's you know can have a higher cost than uh, currently reflected. So the thought process to this adjustment is to better reflect the cost of healthcare. And I don't think that's what we haven't been speaking to. What we've all probably been talking about more is to have a smoother transition. You know, these poor kids that were turning from age 20 to 21, their premiums were increasing drastically that first year, uh, becoming quote unquote an adult. So you'll see here in the middle, what I'm referring to is the premium for kids has been prior to 2018, been based on a percentage, which was of a 21 year old premium. And that percentage was 0.635% of a 21 year old. However, as of 2018, that benchmark is increasing. So this, the children zero to 14 are gonna be at a higher rate than they were prior to 2018. An example is, is down here. So assuming the 21-year-old premium is $403. Prior to 2018, using that 0.635 uh, benchmark, the zero to 20 children rate was $256. However, using that same 21-year-old premium in 2018 going forward, but using a higher benchmark of the 0 0.765, that 0 to 14-year-old premium is going to be 308, not 256. So I don't think that we've been talking about the 0 to 14 premium is increasing in addition to the, the next slide, which is showing you how there's a new age bracket for 15, 16, 17, et cetera. So this might be better visual for you. This is a 2017 ratio of a 21-year-old premium, what the, the kids rate was based on. You'll see that it jumps instead of the 0.635%, 0 to 14, now it's the 0.65. And that is alone, in addition to the manual increases, for a 0 to 14-year-old premium in 2018, they're going to see about a 20% rate increase, plus the manual increase on top of that. Then we have been talking about that every child age 15, 16, 17 will have a higher rate. So you can see that ratio increases every year at that age bracket to slowly graduate them up to a 21 year old premium. But the result of that is the 15 year old, instead of a 20% increase plus manual, you'll see a 31% and the poor 21 year old is going to see close to a 53% increase plus the manual. So let me know if you have any questions on that. Um, but what we're alluding to there is you're going to have one age band for 0 to 14 and the separate single age bands for 15 to 20. The good news is you're still only charged for your oldest three children under the age of 21. So here's an example of that. Using the 2017 methodology but with the same premiums for example purposes. If you have a family with four kids under age 20, the 40-year-old employee is 515, the 38-year-old spouse is 503, and then all the kids under age 20 are the same premium, the 256. The nine-year-old, the fourth child, is free. In 2018, however, um, same scenario, same ages, 
you see the 18 year old has a higher premium than the 15 year old and the 12 year old, but your nine year old is still free. And the total premium is increasing from 1788 to 2032, just because the, the premium alone for the youngest child is increased as well as the age bracket from 15 to 18 is charging a higher rate than before. All right, this is just a quick slide, more of a reference point for you later. Every year there's uh, new changes to deductible out-of-pocket maximums, HSA contribution limits, et cetera. So you can see what the new amounts are for 2018. And then a quick reminder, in 2017, we all had to get used to some new HSA plan designs that were very confusing. And a quick reminder of how we got to these weird HSA uh, benefits is that we had a contradiction between California state law AB 1305 and IRS requirements for HSA deductibles for family members. So the California law said you can't have a deductible higher than $2,000 for an individual unless it's a bronze plan. However, the IRS rules for HSA say that you can't have a deductible higher than 2,700 the minimum deductible actually has to be $2,700 for 2018. It was $2,600 for 2017, unless the individual deductible is greater than $2,700 within that family. So what I'm getting to is that's how we ended up with these deductibles that you see on some of the insurance companies. For example, Anthem. If you look at the benefit summary, you're going to see three individual deductibles. 2000 it was $2,600 for 2017. Now it's bumping to $2,700 for 2018, and then a family deductible of 4,000. But I just wanna point out that some insurance companies like United Healthcare and Health Net, for example, work differently. On their benefit summaries, you're only gonna see two deductibles like we're used to on benefit plans, not these three. So I think most people are used to on this Anthem plan design. If you're an employee only, you have no dependents on the plan with you, your deductible is $2,000. If you're a family of four, the 2000 means nothing to anyone in your family, but you have an individual deductible embedded within that family of 2700. So one family member, just one person gets really sick, the most they're gonna pay is an individual deductible of 2700, and then they'll go to coinsurance. But you also have the safety net of an aggregate 4000 family deductible. So maybe no one person has a huge bill of $2,700 or more, but maybe you have four people each at $1,000. That's how you could get to the 4,000 deductible family. UHC's plan design is different. So again, you only have two deductibles. It works the same if you're an employee only, it's a $2,000 deductible. But just like the Anthem plan above, if you're a family of four, the 2,000 actually means nothing in your family. You have one deductible for the family. It's an aggregate 2,700. One person can hit it on their own and then the whole family's hit their family deductible. Or you can all chip in a little bit, four members hitting $675 to all accrue together to the 2,700. Now, I do wanna point out that the deductible that we're talking about here is aggregate. The out-of-pocket maximum, however, for that individual is embedded. So the deductible's 2,700 for an individual and 6,500 for the out-of-pocket max. And for a family, it's 2,700 for a family deductible and a family out-of-pocket maximum of 13,000. So I just wanna point that out because um, one, it's odd. I think most of us are used to that, having the three plan, three deductibles on benefit summaries now for HSAs, but UHC and, the unit, and HealthNet actually just came out with this plan design in July and later in the year for HealthNet. And so just want to point out that this UHC plan is actually better than Anthem because you have a much lower family deductible. It's only 2,700 versus 4,000 with Anthem and the other carriers that work that same way. All right, so I know this is a lot of information. I'm just going to kind of point out the ones that are different or um, positive, et cetera, to the other. So this is showing the different plan types that our insurance companies sell. You'll see, for example, starting with Aetna, you've got your traditional PPO, HSA, HMO, they have an EPO plan design. But what I want to point out is in bold and italicized, and that is in 2017, Aetna stopped offering a full network platinum PPO. So the best full network plan you can get with Aetna on the PPO side is a gold. And what's new in 2018 is they now only offer one full network HMO plan. It's the gold level. So basically on the full networks, they've gotten restrictive on the plans that they offer. 
The other thing that's new with that in 2018 is they no longer offer that indemnity plan for people that don't live in an MC or PPO network area. So that's new at renewals. Anthem, you see very simple. They have the traditional plan styles. With CalChoice, I want to point out that unfortunately, no, we don't have a full network PPO with CalChoice anymore, and I don't think you'll ever see that happen again. However, what Anthem was able to give CalChoice in 2018 are better plan designs for the PPO and EPO. So we're excited that the benefits within the Anthem PPO, which is typically what the owner is buying within CalChoice, are better than before. So what they did is they used to have a copay for the first three office visits, and then you went to deductible and coinsurance. And now it's just like a normal PPO plan. Every time you go to the doctor, you pay a copay. You'll never have the deductible and coinsurance on the PPO plans through CalChoice. They also lowered out-of-pocket maximums, and they lowered or removed some RX deductibles. So that the Anthem PPO plan designs got better in CalChoice, but they're still not full network. However, the Anthem EPO is still that prudent buyer PPO full network that is very broad throughout California and actually the U.S. Um, and there's that new California law that went into place in July of 2017 that made EPOs more attractive. Quick reminder of that, um, what that means is if the member does what they're, you know, should do and stay in network for the hospital, if they get that random anesthesiologist or radiologist or ER, ER doctor that turns out to be out of network when they're at an in-network hospital, that out-of-network provider cannot balance bill them. And those providers have to work with the state of California to deem a fair charge, et cetera. So there's some safety net there now that there wasn't before. So if you do want a full network, I think you're more comfortable selling that EPO with Anthem and CalChoice than ever before. And the biggest news we have for CalChoice in 2018 is just like 14 and 15, we're back to having rate and benefit parity with Kaiser. We've had it with Sutter Health Plus and Western Health Advantage. So the plans that, for example, WHA offers within CalChoice are the exact benefits and rates as they offer direct. So now, again, Kaiser rates and benefits in CalChoice will match the direct rates and benefits for Kaiser outside CalChoice in starting in 2018. We just listed the top selling plans for all the carriers, so you can see what those are. Depends on the carrier. Some carriers you can see sell higher end plans, others sell lower end plans, narrow networks, et cetera, just to give you kind of benchmark of what we're seeing. Down here to Health Net, the only thing I really want to point out is they've continued on with that odd HSP plan that no one knew what it was. Just a reminder, it stands for Health Service Plan, and it fun basically functions like an EPO, and we'll talk about that in a second. And then United Healthcare also has an EPO and it uses a different na uh, network called Navigate. So unlike Anthem's EPO up here that uses a prudent buyer PPO network, this is a different network completely. All right, it's important to understand which plans and networks you can sell at the same time amongst the different carriers. So that's what the slide is here. So with Aetna, they're continuing on. They don't care which network and which metallic tier you sell together, just pick five. So you can still put together a full network plan, high and low. You can include a bronze with a gold PBO, for example. So just be aware of that. With Anthem, they're uh, continuing on the promo they've had all year for 2017, basically, into March of 2015. But it's important to know it only applies to the HMO networks meaning you can sell the full and narrow Anthem HMO at the same time to a group, but not a full and narrow PPO at the same time. So only on the HMO side, not the PPO side. But they don't care which metallic level you sell. You can put a platinum plan with the bronze plan, not a problem with Anthem. CalChoice no change, but just a reminder that within CalChoice, you do have to pick two adjacent metal tiers. So it has to be a gold and silver. You cannot sell the platinum and the bronze. I want to spend more time with HealthNet and United Healthcare because they actually both have portfolios that they have grouped together. And once you select a portfolio, you get all the plans within the portfolio, but you can't take plans from one portfolio and sell it alongside a portfolio plans within another portfolio. So specifically, in 2018, HealthNet has two portfolios. One is the enhanced care that we're used to, but there's a new one called Enhanced Care PPO Choice. This is mainly for those with groups in LA County. So if you don't have a group in LA County, you're not gonna be selling the second portfolio. You will only be selling the enhanced choice. 
and the enhanced choices where you're going to find the full network HMO and the full network PPO at all metallic tiers, along with the other plan designs you see here. The enhanced care PPO is basically um, EPO in LA County. And what you get when you select that, and narrow networks do sell more in Southern California than they do in Northern California, you still get the full network HMO, but you lose out on the full network PPO plans. You only get the bronze PPO and the bronze HSA, meaning if you're selling this enhanced care PPO choice portfolio, you will not have a full network platinum, gold, or silver PPO plan with HealthNet. So again, Northern California, you're going to be uh, just showing the Enhanced Choice Portfolio. If you have a group in LA County, that's when you can look at the Enhanced Care PPO. Moving on to United Healthcare. United Healthcare used to have three different portfolios. They went down to two portfolios in 2017. In July, they brought three back, and they're continuing with three in 2018. So what's the difference between the three? The first two are called Choice Simplified. There's one and there's two. The third portfolio is multi-choice state, and that name just confuses everybody. So going back to the Choice Simplified one, this is the portfolio that's going to get you all the networks they sell, but it doesn't give you the richest plan design, meaning you can't get the Platinum PPO 1010 plan design on the Choice Simplified portfolio. If you don't care about that one specific plan design or the 6300 HSA plan, sell away the Choice Simplified one, gets you all the networks, including the Narrow Network Alliance and Focus. But if you're, say, in the Bay Area and your group wants the best of the best plan design, you want that full network platinum PPO 1010, then you need to sell the Choice Simplified 2 portfolio. It gets you the best plan design. It does not give you this Alliance and Focus HMO, but if you're in the Bay Area, you probably don't care about those two Narrow Network HMO plan or networks. So that's the difference between choice one and two is if the platinum PPO plan is available, they do have a second platinum PPO. It's just the richest platinum PPO is not available in this one. They get you all networks, choice simplified two. You lose it out on narrow network HMOs, <coughs> excuse me, but you get to the best plan design. All right, multi-choice state. So that portfolio has been around forever. It's kind of been a redheaded stepchild sitting to the left side. That is where United Healthcare has plugged the plan designs that mirror the state exchange plan designs. Nothing's really wrong with it, other than it didn't have as much offerings before. It used to have a different uh, RX formulary, and there are different Kaiser roles. So I want to point out that it might get more attention now, because now with this multi-choice state, you do have more plan offerings, not as much through ch as what you'd get through Choice Simplified 1 or 2, but it gets you more than before. It gets you multiple networks, including now in 2018, it gets you the full Select Plus PPO network in this portfolio. But I do want to do a strong caveat that the Kaiser rules are different. UHC is extremely lenient alongside Kaiser, has been since 2014. We sell a lot of it. But if you sell the multi-choice state portfolio, you need that traditional 75% of the whole group to enroll with UHC which is different than the Choice Simplified Kaiser rules, which we'll get to. All right, moving on. So here we just listed HSA plan offerings, just because in 2017, everyone was wondering where those rich HSA plan designs were, and then we ended up with those odd plan designs we already talked about with the three deductibles on the benefit summaries, or that aggregate 2700 uh, HSA as well with HealthNet United. I do want to remind people we get lots of questions with Anthem. They have some HSA plan designs that have the, the letters RXC afterwards, and everyone says, what does that mean? What that means is you, after you pay the medical deductible, medical and RX combined deductible, then you have RX copays. That's just what it means, RXC, RX copays after the deductible. Now, um, on EPOs, I do want to spend a second there because in 2017, we really started seeing EPOs come back into the small group California marketplace. But of course, the carriers all uh, handle them differently. So with Aetna and the Anthem EPO through CalChoice, they work similar in the sense that they're more PPO-like. You do not choose a PCP. You do not need referrals. You're essentially using the PPO network you just have no out-of-network benefits unless it's an emergency. So that's how Aetna and the Anthem EPO within CalChoice work. Complete opposite is HealthNet and United Healthcare. 
their EPOs, which with HealthLend is called HSP, the Health Service Plan, or with United, you're using that Navigate EPO, work more like HMO plans. Yes, you choose a PCP on both of them. There's a little more flexibility than your traditional HMO with both, but you do choose a PCP, and it's a different network than the PPO offering. So with HealthNet on the HSCP, HSP plan, what happens here is your PCP is selected, but you can actually refer yourself with anyone in that network. So it gives you a little more flexibility than your traditional HMO, but they do want that PCP um, in, initially trying to help you guide your care. They did pull out in 2018 the Pure Care EPO, so you'll see that no longer available. With United Healthcare, they have that EPO, Navigate, different network. You choose the PCP, but the nice thing with the UHC Navigate EPO is the fact that your PCP does have to give you a referral, but they're not bound within a certain medical group. That PCP can actually refer you to any Navigate provider in the state of California. So your um, Northern California PCP can refer you to Southern California uh, cardiologists if you want to go that route as long as they're within the Navigate network. And then we listed the ACO offerings as well. So I want to spend a second here um, with all the different carriers, and again, they handle differently sometimes. Sometimes, depending on where you go for service and you're in network, but still that depends on the facility, they can charge you higher or lower in benefits. So what I'm getting to is the category is called different costs for hospital owned outpatient. So with most of our carriers, Aetna, HealthNet, and United Healthcare, they have some plan designs that do this, but not all. Basically, your lower end plans are going to, if you go or on your own, you're choosing to go to a hospital owned, say, surgery center, it costs more. So they're going to pass on more of the cost to you. So with Aetna and HealthNet, typically you're going to see a higher coinsurance for that type of facility than a freestanding surgery center not owned by an expensive hospital. With United Healthcare, what they do is they have what they call a per occurrence deductible is what it is. So it's a $250 deductible on top of your normal medical deductible and coinsurance that you pay because you chose to go to a more expensive place. Now, we just had someone here at Beer and Purvison employee that needed a sonogram. And since they're in, this, in the industry, they did a lot of homework, their doctor referred them to a hospital owned, actually they referred them actually to walk into the hospital and get a sonogram at the hospital that are affiliated with. That would have cost that member $700 for that service. However, they did some research, found out literally there was a place across the street from the same hospital that could get them in sooner than the hospital could get them in. And instead of charging $700 for the service, they're only being charged $150. So that is just an example of why you're seeing different cost sharing for different places of care. And United Healthcare on their provider search, you can find out which hospitals are freestanding and will save you money than not. And we'll point out that the Platinum PPO plan and the HSA plan doesn't have that per occurrence deductible, but all the other plans do. So hopefully that makes a little sense and you understand why these carriers are doing it. Basically, you're going to a more expensive place, you're still in network, but they're just going to have you pay a greater portion of the cost. What's different with Anthem is they actually don't have any plans that do that, but they've started a new uh, policy where specific to CT and MRI scans, if you go to a hospital setting, they actually need to pre-authorize pre that service ahead of time. And they might come back to you and tell you, you know what, instead of going to the hospital for the CT scan, you could literally go to that place across the street and we're going to pay for it there. We're just not going to pay for it at the hospital. So it's not that they're denying your service. If you need a CT scan or MRI, they're just trying to gear you to, it really doesn't need to be done there. You can have the same procedure done at a non-hospital setting. And then I want to point out um, a little quirky plan designs with HealthNet. Not at all, but on some of the plan designs you see listed here, which turns out to be their, their lower end plans, they work a little different. So we want to call out that they're more like HSAs in the sense that they are a medical and RX combined deductible. And what's a little different is that the copay applies to primary doctors, but if you go to a specialist, your deductible actually applies to a specialist. So it's different. So again, only on these HealthNet plan designs, we want to point that out. 
Moving on, this is just a quick slide indicating more of a reference for you. Uh, sometimes you know you get questions on infertility. Some carriers include it in all their plans, you know, with limitations. Some carriers have writers you can add on, but if one person in the group wants it, for example, with Anthem, you have to add this cost on to all employees in the group, not just those that want it, of course. Um, and then other people have included on certain plans and not others. So you can see that same with Cairo. Sometimes there's a writer, sometimes there's not, sometimes it's included, et cetera. All right, um, almost done here with the benefits section. And that is a um, quick reminder on the insurance companies, because as you see, these premiums are so expensive. They're trying to find ways to give some value back to members. So some of the carriers have added these value added programs. So for example, in 2017, continuing on, Anthem members can take advantage of a program called Pay Forward if they want to. It's completely optional. They just sign up for it if they're interested. And depending on where they shop, but it can be up to 12,000 different retailers, including Amazon, Nordstrom's, et cetera. If you use this program and sign up for it, you could get up to 15% of cash back on your purchases. So you're just doing your everyday shopping and you're just getting cash back, kind of, I guess like a Discover card. Um, California Choice, they've had this for a while. Depending on the size group, depends on the discounts you get. Um, but they've added additional discounts for uh, like Fitbits and things like that in 2018, so expanding the program. With United Healthcare, I want to point out they've had that fitness reimbursement that gets a lot of attention. If the adult members in the group work out 12 times in one month, they get $20 cash back to them, and that applies to the employee and their spouse. But they have a new program in 2018 called Real Appeal. It's a weight loss program on PPO plans only. So again, they sign up for it. They can send them like a, a scale and a blender and lots of product to help them. They give them a counselor and some guidance on actually how to um, lose weight and how to maintain it. For telehealth, definitely been a huge topic, I guess, starting really in 2016, but it keeps getting expanded. So all of our insurance companies, except HealthNet, have telehealth, meaning if you have um, you know, you just don't feel good. You don't want to drag yourself to the urgent care because you don't really want to get more sick than you already are, especially if you have a young child and you have webcam capabilities. You can actually contact a doctor and have a doctor visit through a webcam capability. So that's more on all the PPO plans with Aetna, Anthem, and United Healthcare. You see it listed with HealthNet, but it's only on certain plan designs. It's their ACO plan designs, community care, and enhanced care PPO, both more in Southern California. So I just want to caveat it's not in all their PPO plans. Then Aetna, Anthem, and United Healthcare have expanded even further with concierge, or not concierge, but um, doctors will actually come to your house nowadays, like the old days. So again, it applies to PPO plans. They're all using the same vendor called Heal. You do have to be in a major metro metropolitan area. So if you're way up north on the Oregon border in California, you're not going to have this access to this. But if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, LA County, et cetera, you can contact the HEAL program, have a doctor come to your house within two hours, and just, you can see what the benefits are depending on the insurance company. All right, pharmacy. Pharmacies definitely become a big conversation as we indicated more in the legislation a topic earlier. Um, everyone's been making lots of changes to their formulary. So this is a quick summary. In 2018, Aetna is using a different formulary than they used before. You'll see it, it's going to be called California Small Group ACA Formulary. So that's the formulary for 2018 forward. Aetna is uh, helpful in the sense that this is always discovered when the, the owner's wife shows up to the pharmacy to get their prescription, only to find out their pill is no longer on the carrier's formulary, and they had no clue. Um, so what Aetna will do is they'll transition the member so you basically can get a one-time refill for the old drug, which gives you 30 days to contact your doctor or find another alternative that is on the Aetna formulary, or your doctor can contact Aetna to get uh, an approval for you to stay on that drug. With Anthem, no change to the formulary they're using. Um, it's still going to be the select formulary for all plans. Um, and I am partial to Anthem in the sense that if the drug that owner's wife needs or is always used is not on the select formulary, uh, there's a very high chance that as long as the doctor contacts Anthem, they'll approve that member to stay on that drug if it's really necessary. 
uh, let's see, with HealthNet, they have a new pharmacy network program for certain plan designs. And so essentially, if you're selling the narrow network plans listed here, the community care, Salute Moss, Smart Care, which is very popular, you're going to have certain pharmacies you can go to which are different than usual. And you can see that it still includes CVS, Walmart, Costco, Safeway, and Vons, but the big news is it excludes Walgreens. So if you're buying these plan designs, you don't get access to Walgreens. With United Healthcare, it's very important to know that they have two formularies. One is for their PPO and EPO plans, and one's for their HMO. The PPO and EPO are switching to a new formulary in 2018. It's called California Custom PDL. So I do want to highly caveat that it's a very involved formulary. It lists a lot of prescription drugs. If the owner's wife's drugs is not listed on that PPO formulary, she will not get it. So they make basically no exceptions on the PPO formulary. If you don't see it there, that member is not going to be getting that prescription. Please refer those RX searches over to Beer and Purvis ahead of time. We would love to help you look up the drugs and providers ahead of time so there's no surprises afterwards. However, with the HMO formulary, um, it's a little different. You'll see the format. It's, it doesn't list as many prescriptions. It doesn't mean that's that much smaller than the PPO. It's just listing the top most prescribed prescriptions. So as a result, if you don't see the owner's wife drug on the HMO formulary, contact us. It may be there, just might not be one of their most uh, prescribed drugs, so they don't list it. So again, no exceptions off the PPO formulary. There could be ex not really exceptions, it's just not a full list for the HMO formulary. And then we do mention for 90-day mail order program, the carriers have changed through the years. You know, traditionally, if you went through mail order, you got 90-day supply, but we're only charged for two months. That's still the place with Aetna. However, with your different carriers, you're going to see, for example, with Anthem, for generic drugs, you do get two weeks free. But with brand or non-brand drugs, you still pay for three months, and you get three months if you go mail order. What Anthem started doing in 2017 is they started letting members go to a retail pharmacy getting a 90-day supply at once. You're still charged for 90 days, but at least you don't have to go in every month. With HealthNet, uh, depends on the whether it's generic or brand, kind of like with Anthem, if you're going to get a month free or two weeks free. And with United, it depends HMO or PPO, whether you get a month free or two weeks free. I'm not going to go through this. This is just listing all the PPO networks with our carriers and how many doctors and hospitals for comparison purposes. And we're using the data that the carrier provides. Um, I do want to mention three items on this slide, and that is with California Choice on the Anthem Advantage PPL plan, it does include some of the Sutter providers. It's not all the Sutter providers, but it can be still a very viable network. So don't be uh, too scared, but let us look at the providers for you so you know ahead of time. And with HealthNet, they do have that enhanced care PPO, but again, it's only in LA, which has that separate portfolio to buy. But what's really nice with United Healthcare is they're the only carrier I'm aware of that actually technically has a narrow network PPO plan, or network rather, for out-of-state employees potentially. So this is listing their PPO networks. Full is Select Plus, narrow is Core, but you'll see it's not too huge of a difference. And the nice thing is if your out-of-state employee lives in an area where that United sells a Core network, that employee can get the Core plan design and premium, they don't have to buy the full Select Plus if it works for them. So it's a way, again, to get a narrow network PPO for out-of-state employees. Here you'll see that the AP EPO networks are listed there. And again, just that Anthem EPO is using the full Prudent Buyer list. HMO networks are listed here. A couple things I want to point out on this slide, and that's with Anthem in July of this year, as of, um, sorry, in July, Anthem small group HMO now matches large group HMO. There used to be a difference with Anthem on the HMO and small group. It didn't have Sutter. Now it has the full Sutter providers in small groups. So there's no reason why a group that really isn't um, 100 plus to say they are just to keep their PCP like it may have been a year ago. 
with California Choice. A lot of network information over here, uh, a lot of activity in Santa Cruz County. So if you have any groups down there, they have more options. Sutter Health Plus is now expanded into Santa Cruz. Western Health Advantage has expanded into the East San Francisco East Bay, San Francisco and Marin counties. I'll talk about that more in a second. I do want to point out, however, if you haven't heard, Western Health Advantage is losing UC Davis as of 1-1. And that is not a contract dispute that might get signed at the ninth hour. Um, it's going to be uh, gone. There's no dispute about it. And so if you have Western Health Advantage members that have UC Davis PCPs or providers, they either need to move to a different insurance company or find a different PCP. That is one nice thing with CalChoice is if you did sell WHA through CalChoice in this network situation, that off anniversary, that member could move from Western Health Advantage to a different carrier. No other carrier does that. All the other carriers, of course, will let you change your PCP because you've lost yours clearly, but you couldn't move from one carrier to another off anniversary without disrupting the whole employee group. Um, I want to point out with HealthNet, I'm sorry, with United Healthcare, that the Advantage HMO, which is their narrow, one of their narrow HMOs, includes Canopy Health, which leads us into the next slide here. So what is Canopy Health? Canopy Health is specific to the San Francisco Bay Area, and it's a new concept. Essentially, the providers were working with insurance companies, creating these ACO type plans. Some of the providers felt that they did their part. They provided great care at a lower cost, but they weren't seeing the return back from the insurance company. So what they did, these providers specifically meaning UCSF, John Muir, Meritage and Marin County, et cetera, that are listed here, grouped together to basically create their own network. I think of it as like a very large medical group. And what they did is then they went to a couple insurance companies, United Healthcare and Western Health Advantage, and they said, we want to partner with you. Again, we're going to focus on creating good quality care, but at a lower cost, which will eventually be seen in the premiums through to the employees. And we'll get a return because it's actually a file network with the state of California. So what happens is the employee chooses a PCP within Canopy Health. But instead of the traditional HMO medical group where you choose your PCP and say the John Muir Medical Group, and you can only be referred to specialists within John Muir Medical Group, if you choose that same John Muir PCP, but through the Canopy Health quote unquote medical group, now your John Muir PCP can refer you to anyone within this kind of, again, the super medical group. That John Muir Medical Group can send refer you to UCSF or over in Marin, to Meritage, et cetera. And it's not a special exception, it's just how this works. So it gives the person, sign up with the doctor you're probably already gonna sign up with already, but it gives you greater access to more providers. And the irony is you're gonna get um, some more tools. So a mobile cost estimator is gonna help you know, again, if I go to the hospital, it's gonna cost me $700 for that sonogram versus across the street costing me 150. Um, and then here's how you get it. The United Healthcare, again, you're signing up for the narrow network Advantage HMO, which means you're paying lower premiums, but you're getting access to more doctors. So it doesn't seem like it makes sense, but it's a win-win for everybody. Again, you're paying a lower premium because you're choosing the UHC Advantage HMO direct with UHC or Western Health Advantage. It just becomes their full network, but Western Health Advantage is very competitive against some of the other carriers in the area. And if you want to choose CalChoice as a carrier, the employees can choose Canopy Health, signing up through Western Health Advantage, not United. So CalChoice has Canopy through Western Health Advantage, and then UHC and Western Health obviously offer it direct as well. So again, in summary, what this new thing is, is allowing the members to save on premium dollars, they, but they get greater access to more providers, and they get very high-touch uh, concierge service and coordination and care. All right, moving topics to underwriting. So with underwriting, uh, we get lots of questions about brand new startups. So Anthem has been the go-to and continues to be so. And the reason is, is the company can literally be brand new. You want to enroll them for December 1st. They haven't even started payroll. Uh, we can get them approved for December 1st prior to them running payroll for the month of December. You do have to be ready to provide 30 days payroll 
by January 15th, 45 days of that effective date if asked. So be aware of that. Aetna's pretty flexible though. Once you have two weeks payroll, they would approve that group. Health Net and UHC are the traditional, you need six weeks payroll before they would approve that group. So CalChoice has always been more flexible on the five plus enrolled, so you can see that. Then the irony with ACA is we started, started seeing our insurance companies getting more flexible in underwriting. And essentially because of the cyclical nature of small group nowadays where everything enrolls in December or a lot in January, the carrier said, how can we make operations easier? So what Aetna said is, you know, larger groups of 20 enrolled or more, we don't really need, well, we don't need a D9C, we don't need legal documents, we don't need payroll. We just want the master app, employee apps and waivers, and the check, and we will approve that group because it's a legitimate group. Uh, there's no funny business. We know it's a 20 plus group, et cetera. Um, that assumes they've had prior coverage. If it's a virgin group, they do want to see a D9C. With Anthem, they're flexible too. Group of six enrolled with prior coverage, they just need a prior carrier bill. So they don't need a D9C, they'll take a prior carrier bill. And Anthem doesn't like nickel and dime you and making sure that um, the exact same members are on that bill, et cetera, to enrollment. Which leads us to CalChoice. They're flexible. If you have 10 plus enrolled, they too will take a prior carrier bill instead of a D9C. But they do make sure that the enrollment was in plus or minus 10% of that. So be aware, you know, if you give us a group with uh, 10 people in the prior carrier bill, but you're enroll only enrolling seven, we're going to have to come back to you. I'm sorry, I guess 10 enrolled and you're maybe 13 people in the prior carrier bill. We're going to come back to you asking for a D9C because we've gone beyond that 10% percentage allowed. With UHC, they're the most flexible for group 10 eligible, not enrolled, 10 eligible. They have a form that you sign, it's called participation certification. Um, and that basically, you know, you're signing away that you're a legitimate 1 100 group and you're meeting participation. Therefore, they don't need D9C, they don't need legal docs, they don't need payroll, similar to kind of like what Aetna does. All right, underwriting. So we have found that with the simpler uh, requirements with underwriting with ACA that a lot of our carriers have actually gotten faster in underwriting. So with Anthem and some with some um, technology that we put in place with them, so we have EDI real-time feeds with Anthem, uh, we're still seeing right now one-day turnaround times with Anthem, and they did this last December as well when they were getting quite a bit of business. They're very efficient, they've got a great underwriting team, you give us all the requirements, we can get that group approved with one day, and we also give you those member IDs with the group number. So that's a very nice feature. With United Healthcare, their implementations have always been a little bit of a struggle. However, the past, I would say, 18 months, they've gotten a lot better, and we're seeing an average three-day turnaround time with United Healthcare. And the problem is we don't get member IDs with UHC anymore, but we get that group number faster than the old 15 business days or longer when the business really got um, you know, high volumes like they're writing now. I will point out that one to two life groups with United can take longer. Um, they basically are auditing those groups first. You will not get an approval on the one to two life groups unless their you know, underwriting is comfortable with it. So that could take longer than the three day average we see for the three plus groups. And those groups must uh, use the EFT option, which reminder with UHC is different. Once you sign up for the EFT, it's ongoing. You can't get a paper check anymore. With Aetna, just a difference in them is they do have a very strict submission deadline and they, they held it last December as well and continuing forward. You have to submit Aetna business by the effective date. If you submit a 12-1 group on 12-2, they're gonna make you roll to 1-1, which means you have different rates and different benefits. HealthNet has a new program. It's guaranteeing that you're going to get ID cards within 10 business days of the approval. Now we're moving into participation. So we get lots of questions alongside Kaiser. So we have a lot of flexibility here. Um, with Anthem, you'll see a group of five plus enrolled. We only need 30% with Anthem. 70% can go Kaiser. That technically is through March 15th. We'll see if they extend that. The most flexible carrier we have right now is United Healthcare. Assuming you're selling one of those choice simplified portfolios, we essentially need five enrolled bodies with United Healthcare that are enrolled in California. So the 60% is listed here, but you have to have you count the Kaiser members and the UHC people toward the 60%. 
And since UHC, as you'll see down here, considers valid waivers, individual waivers as valid, there's really impossible not to get 60% participation when you're counting both UHC and Kaiser towards that, and the individual coverage is not against it. So we've written groups of 100 lives, five enrolled in California going with United Healthcare, 95 enrolling with Kaiser, and that's perfectly fine. And then, of course, California Choice is always the best alongside Kaiser because it's in the portfolio. And again, since the same rates and benefits direct will be in CalChoice as of 2018, why not sell CalChoice? You get more flexibility, especially for those new hires that they might hire down the road that might not like Kaiser. Back to the individual coverage uh, conversation, Aetna no longer considers that a valid waiver, but Anthem is like United and does consider individual as a valid waiver. The other big selling point with United, and we write a lot of this business, is that with United Healthcare, if you have more employees outside of California than in California, you really have no home except for United. United will write those groups, couple caveats. Um, if you don't have 51% eligible in any one state, we really need to know specifically who's enrolling where, because the state with the most enrollment, and it can be by one body, will be the state that we're gonna write the rates and benefits out of. So if we give you a quote for Texas, um, because you had five people in Texas and three employees in all the other states, but you end up enrolling, say, six people in a different state, we have to switch the rates and benefits to the other state. And you, the broker, always have to be licensed in the state you're writing the business out of, of course. Today is November 15th, and that starts the special open window time period. So you can see a reminder with ACA, one little caveat that once a year, groups not meeting participation or contribution can submit to an insurance company, but there's very tight rules on this. So between November 15th and December 15th, you can in submit to an insurance company for one one effective date. There's been a lot of confusion on this. Um, people think it's free game for everything, but the group still has to meet all other rules. It still has to be one to 100 full-time equivalents eligible uh, group, sorry, one to 100. You still have to have 51% California, et cetera, et cetera. The only rules you cannot be, or you don't have to meet when you submit a group this way is the participation and contribution. They cannot decline you for that. But if you're not meeting the other normal rules, they can certainly decline you. Insurance companies do not like these groups, so they're gonna nickel and dime you and making sure that everything is in compliance, okay? The other question we get is, well, what, alongside, what about alongside Kaiser with these groups? And different insurance companies handle it differently. Um, as time has evolved, what we've ended up having is if you're selling Kaiser alongside a special open window group, it knocks you out of Aetna, Anthem, and CalChoice. They won't do that. But HealthNet and United Healthcare potentially will. So you could have one employee going HealthNet and 99 going Kaiser, and that would be fine through this special program for 1 1 effective date, assuming all other rules are met. With HealthNet, they do say they have the right to um, cancel down the road due to participation. So they have to take you that first year. Maybe at the next renewal, they say, well, we don't want a group of one out of 99. So you need to go to a different insurance company. United Healthcare will allow alongside Kaiser as long as you're meeting their traditional rule, which is five in California enrolled. And um, they do also state they might not be renewed. So I guess you just flip flop between Health Net United every year, which would be fun, but at least it'd be home if, if someone has really needed that. But if you're, Kaiser's not an issue, it does open it up for the other carriers. But give us a call. And the other thing is, we do have to have waivers for all those employees. So again, you could do that group of one with HealthNet 99 with Kaiser, but we need 99 waivers for the Kaiser bodies, okay? Which I'm sure would be fun to gather, but we've seen it. All right, the irony with the community rates changing for 2018 affecting those children is that we're getting lots of questions now. Can I move from a 1-1 effective date to a 12-1 effective date to avoid these community rate changes for the kids for one year? And the answer is possibly yes, depends on the carrier. So you can see that most carriers uh, will allow you to do it as long as you haven't done it once in the past 12, or more than once in the past 12 months. I want to point out a couple items here. CalChoice is a little different in their philosophy, and you have to be wanting to change your anniversary date to align benefits with another line of coverage. So we want to move to a 12-1 to match our dental benefits. The other thing you have to keep in mind 
is that they won't let you move to a different month that that's in the same rating quarter that you're already in. So you can't have a 12-1 group move to October because October, November, and December are the same rating quarter, but you could have a 12-1 group move to 1-1 or vice versa. And then there are time frames of when you need to submit these groups. So use this more of a reference or better yet, just call us. January rates. So once again, ACA in California hasn't had the huge rate impact, which is good. Um, so renewals are very low and very stable. We're not seeing a lot of movement for December. Um, but for January, you can see the rate action listed here shows quarter over quarter how much those carriers rates change by plan type. So very little. I want to point out a couple things here, and that is with Anthem, here's what they were moving quarter over quarter. This, the 0.5%, negative 0.5% to 8.8% is their average renewal right now. The state of California did come back to Anthem and say, we'd prefer you to lower your rates, and this is what they ended up with. Now, the rates were not very high to begin with. I, they weren't, um, but the Anthem complied. United Healthcare, on the other hand, they filed the rates, which again, average over quarter over quarter, 2.5% average with the PPO, a negative increase on the HMO, and the state said we'd prefer you to lower your rates. And United Healthcare said, no, thank you. So they kept with their initial filing. In the state of California, the carriers have to file the rates with the state of California, but the state of California has no authority to be able to deny the rates. They can just give suggestions. Typically, the insurance companies comply, uh, for example, like Anthem did above, United Healthcare, you know, they also realize that they've got to run a good company and charge what they need to charge so there's no huge rate increases down the roads. So that was our philosophy. And then a reminder with Health Net that they're the one carrier we have where if you hire a new hire, you look at the premium for the age of that new hire for the age they were when the group actually had their last renewal. So if they are 40 today, but they were 39 when the group last renewed. If that employee worked for them, you're going to give them the premium for a 39-year-old. All the other insurance companies say, how old are you at a time of enrollment? If you're 40, we're going to charge you for a 40-year-old. And last item is small group commissions. So everyone has stayed. The one carrier that had a change for 2018 is CalChoice, which is now matching everyone else. So everyone's at a flat 5%. Um, some of the carriers for the very large groups decrease lower than that, but the starting point with everyone is the same now, flat 5%. Another conversation that's come up a lot right now is people always think that small group is horrible. Um, you know, no one likes it. The community rates are hard to deal with, et cetera. But we want to point out that actually sometimes small group isn't as horrible as it seems. And we know that a year ago when the large group segment went from 1 to 50 to 1 100, there were some groups that said, you know, we actually have over 100 full-time equivalents. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. Um, they just attested one way or the other and they went large group. But at the renewal, we're hearing a lot of groups that are having a little trouble. Um, advantage is a small group. One reason is Kaiser rules. So in large group in general, you need about 50% of the group to take Kaiser and 50% can go with the other carrier. As you've seen through this presentation, United Healthcare, we can just take five people and Kaiser can get the other 95. So Kaiser flexibility in small group is greater than with large group. Also, rates can actually be better. Granted, no one likes that community rating and it can be difficult, but the actual sum of the rates can be better. There's no loads in small group for health anymore, right? You can't rate up for anyone like you can in a large group. You can chart, you can have a high and low PPO or higher low HMO and they don't load the rates like they do in large group. And SIC codes aren't a factor in small group. So those attorney firms that get loaded up by large group carriers would have better rates technically in small group. Now, not always, you have to quote it. And the group is what they are. You know, if they're over 100, they should stay in that market. If they're under 100, they should move to that market. And as you just saw, the small group renewal trends are very low right now in small group. We're hearing of, you know, high teen renewals in the large group carriers. And for the first time in a while, they're not negotiating off that. So we're getting a lot of groups that said they were small or maybe they were, I'm sorry, they were large that have um, shrunk in the past year coming down a small group. And it's not always a negative for them. Sometimes it's actually better. So give us a call. We can help you out with that.
And as we approach the 12th, uh, December 1st today, I don't know if you've realized it's 10 business days prior to December 1st, the busiest effective month of the year in our one to 100 small group market. And so we know you know this, but just quick reminder, if you actually are moving the group from one carrier to another, don't forget to ask the HR person if they have any COBRA members that you need to notify or better yet, those CalCobra members that they might not even know about, they need to actually call their carrier to find out if they have CalCobra members. If they do, they need to notify them they're switching carriers. This always comes up three months down the road when the CalCobra member goes to the doctor only to find out they haven't had insurance for three months. The second item here is, as definitely as we approach December 1st, uh, if you haven't been approved by the new insurance company, please remind those employees to get refills right before December 1st so they're not staying at the pharmacy on December 1st. Um, better yet, and only to find out their prescription they actually want is no longer on the formulary. And then I've been involved with a couple of these items, which are always fun. Mention to the employees, if they do do the mail order program with the old insurance company, they do need to stop it and move, set up with a new insurance company. I've been involved with a couple of claims where they didn't stop the old mail order. It was a December 1st group. They received their prescription drug through the mail on December 6th by the old insurance company, and then we had to work, um, it can take a while to get reimbursed by the new insurance company. And typically those mail order drugs, especially the specialty drugs are very expensive. So that can um, you know, not be so fun to deal with sometimes. And then once the group is approved, once you know we're in the later of December and January, please have the HR person really take time, look at their bill, make sure everyone that's supposed to be enrolled is enrolled, on the right plan, on the right network, and I mentioned to the employees to check the PCP on their ID card, because we have a lot of issues where um, they don't realize that they didn't get either the PCP they may wanted or you know didn't tell us about or told us about, but got us reassigned for a different reason at the insurance company. And then don't forget, of course, to cancel the prior coverage uh, once you are approved. So in summary, um, don't forget BMP can help you. You know, Hopefully you know that we're very knowledgeable. We can get back to you responsive. You can trust our answers. Uh, these are all the items that we can help you with. One nice feature that we just rolled out with our Quote Engine Health Connector BP Quote, we call it, is it made the multi-option um, quoting report much simpler to work with. So now at the very top, you just assign which plan should equate to a different plan, press a button, and then it defaults to all the you know 85 employees down below versus having to select a plan for each of the 85 employees one at a time. We've also been rolling out throughout the year a custom generator, so all the tools that you hopefully you know and love us for are now searchable, and then you can create it to a PDF, send it to your client. So if you only want to know the Kaiser rule with, say, Anthem and United, not all the insurance companies, you can go in there, show that one topic for just those two carriers, and send that to your client versus having to show all our underwriting topics for all of our carriers we show. We have a lot of connectivity with East Central. Don't forget that we will set up East Central um, for new and at renewal for the groups, and we do have a subsidy. We have Twitter, so you know that's a way to uh, follow us with a bunch of the tips I've kind of gone through today through the year. That would be more of a daily topic. If you're interested, you can also opt in for text, which we limit to network information, rate information, and legislation information. Um, so we're not going to text you every day. Clearly, we max out at, I think, five or six a month. All right, underwriting, so I talked about uh, BP Enroll, uh, which can also be East Central if you're not gonna pay for the East Central for the whole group throughout the year. We can just use it for free initial online enrollment. We can set up that group, as I said. We also have a subsidy, so it's $1.40 per employee per year for the first, I'm sorry, per month for the first year. So essentially, this subsidy, depending on the size of the group, could actually pay for the subscription cost you have that month with East Central. And if it's an excess, it can roll over to future months. And there's no cap on our subsidies. So the more medical business you give us, you just get that dollar per 40 per employee per month for the first year for that. Um, underwriting is very important to us, so we really focus on our turnaround times. Again, we're still right now one day for Anthem, three days with United, um, and we anticipate that holding. And so hopefully you, you see that when you submit a group to us, you know it's gonna get through underwriting quickly, and that's really the first impression that group has of that right new carrier. And we all know how the group starts off with a carrier, kind of sets the tone for that relationship with that new carrier. As I mentioned, it's very important. We'd love to do your RX and provider searches for you. 
Um, it's especially on the Rx with all the formulary changes, it's very important to know ahead of time versus after you move the group to find out the drug is not on the new formulary. Let us help you and tell you ahead of time. And then remember, we can also help you with admin meetings throughout the year. We'll always help you with service, get those exceptions done, ads, deletes, billing, claims, etc. And at Renewal, we'll set up B-Central again. So with the, the plan offerings, rates, contributions, et cetera, that they're going to offer to their group, even if they're just staying with the new carrier. So I know that was a lot of information. I apologize. Um, but I think we're out of time. We've kind of gone over the hour. So if there were questions, we'll certainly circle back to you. Really appreciate your time today. I know it was a lot of information. Just know you can always contact your Beer and Provost sales team with anything. And information is always changing. So we are sending this out to everyone. But it's a living document. And the best thing to do is just contact us when you have a specific question. But thank you very much for your time today and your partnership throughout the year and all the business you place with BNP. We truly appreciate it. And as we approach the holiday season, hope you have a very nice uh, holiday season with your family and friends. Take care.